Hey friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm here to talk to you guys about leopard gecko care. I just spilled calcium all over. Oops. This video is going to be about how to set up your leopard gecko enclosure. Step one, you need the actual enclosure. So whether that be just your average fish tank, or if you want to build something out of like PVC, or you want to get like an exoterra, those are all really good options. But either way, you need something for the gecko to live in. <laughs> Stop! This video isn't about you! I would honestly probably recommend just your average tank because it's gonna be your cheapest option and the easiest option to find and get a hold of. I do want to say that the minimum size that you can have an adult leopard gecko in is a 10 gallon. So that's what this is. This is a 10 gallon fish tank. But I do kind of feel like a 10 gallon is just a little too small. And I would highly, highly recommend a 20 gallon long enclosure uh, that I think is the best fit for an adult leopard gecko. But juveniles can definitely live in this just fine. My leopard gecko actually lives in a 30 gallon enclosure. And as you can tell, it's a lot longer than it is tall. And that's because leopard geckos, they're not gonna be hanging out in a tree or anything like that. So you want to make sure that whatever size enclosure you have, it's at least a 10 gallon at the very least and that it is longer versus a taller tank. So as for what you need to buy to put in the enclosure, like decor and stuff, you need at least two caves, two places for the gecko to hide. You need one on the warmer side of the tank and one on the cooler side of the tank. So that way they can do this thing called thermoregulating and they need to have caves on both sides of the tank, on the warmer side and on the cooler side, so that no matter what temperature they want to be, they can feel safe and secure. This right here would be a perfect example of a little store-bought cave. It's designed to look like a rock. It is the Exoterra brand. And this actually I don't even use for my leopard gecko anymore because he did grow out of it. But this is a good size for a juvenile. Some other examples of caves is you could do an enclosure similar to mine. Mine is made out of excavator clay. So it's basically like this sand that you get wet and then you can mold it around things. And that's how I have kind of like the rocky, rocky formation here. So mine I did paper towel rolls and then just molded the clay around it. And then over here I have some caves where I put balloons in it and then molded it over and then popped the balloon later. So it just gives them a little tunnel and then it opens up into a bigger cave. A third cave is beneficial, not like a must have but can definitely benefit your gecko and that would be a humid hide. So this would basically aid the gecko in shedding because leopard geckos do shed their skin every so often and it can be difficult for them to get it off since their, since their natural climate is so dry and has such a low humidity. But basically, especially if you have a large enough enclosure, I would really recommend uh, getting a humid hide. You can either buy one like I did, or you can literally make it out of like a plastic Tupperware container, cutting a hole in the side of it and putting paper towel or moss in it. Any place for the gecko to go to have extra humidity can be really helpful when shedding. Moral of the story, um, the more caves you can have in your enclosure, the better. So therefore, the bigger the enclosure, the better. Uh, your leopard gecko will just thank you so much for all the enrich- for all of the enrichment and different places to explore. The more, the merrier. The bigger, the better, you know? Another pretty major thing to talk about when talking about leopard gecko care is substrate. Uh, it's a <laughs> widely um, debated topic. It's pretty controversial. So leopard geckos are considered desert animals and most of the time if you think of the desert you just think of like vast sand, you know? <laughs> um, but that is actually not how it is, especially where leopard geckos are from. It's more of like rocky. There is some sand, obviously, but it's more rocky and yeah, it's not just flat sand. They don't just live on sand. The thing is, pet stores sell sand marketed towards geckos. The problem with that is 
if your gecko were to ingest the sand, it has been known to clump up in their stomachs because they are fairly small creatures and cause impaction, basically not allowing them to digest anything or to poop and that can be a large issue as you could assume so honestly i would recommend a not loose substrate if you can avoid loose substrate do it because it's just not worth the risk in my opinion okay so if i can't use loose substrate Lisa, what, the, what the heck do i use <laughs> well thanks for asking i'll, I'll tell you i'll tell you what can you use? You can use carpet. They sell reptile designated carpet that is cut to fit enclosures. That's a wonderful option. Another option could be tile. Tile flooring if you can go to like Home Depot or whatever just see if they have any extra scraps of tile or just buy some yourself. It might be a little difficult to have it the right sizing so that is a little more difficult but it's also a wonderful option because it's super easy to clean. Paper towel is even a really good option. I used that for my leopard gecko for a little while before I upgraded him to this bougie tank and it worked just fine. You know, it works just like everything else. You take it out and clean it and it's super easy and it's super affordable as well. Something that I do want to mention about leopard geckos is they tend to poop in one spot. So if you want to put down just a little strip of paper towel right in that spot, then you can literally just lift that up and toss it out and replace it every day when he goes to the bathroom. Like, it's so easy. Leopard geckos are the bomb. So I actually don't use the excavator clay for the substrate on the very bottom of the enclosure. There's not much of the bottom showing, but what is showing is actually linoleum. The only thing is is that I know there can be like chemicals in linoleum and you do, especially with hot lamps and heat mats and whatever, um, it can kind of drive the chemicals out and that can be harmful. So I washed it a lot in my bathtub. I don't know if that made it much better. So just if you are planning on using linoleum, do it at your own risk, you know, or your gecko's own risk and just watch out for that, that it could be dangerous. So it's probably not the best option. So those are really the essentials for a leopard gecko. Those are the things that you must have, absolutely must have. A tank, caves, and substrate. You have to have that in the enclosure. Now for decorating and whatever, you can go crazy. Have fun, be creative. I have these little tiny fake cacti um all over i got them from like the dollar store or something <laughs> you can see that one right there the crickets started to eat that one i don't know why they just thought it looked yummy i guess so that's why it kind of looks trash but other than that i think they all look super cute and good this is just a little store-bought plant um from pet supplies plus <laughs> And then, you know, you can do like sticks and stuff and any foliage or plants or decorations that you want. When I was a kid, I used to put like Littlest Pet Shops in my reptile tanks. But I mean, feel free, bro, to, to do what you want. It is your tank as long as you're meeting the requirements and you're not putting your gecko in danger. Go, go for it, bro. Use your imagination. That is it. That is the basics of leopard gecko care. It's pretty easy, I'm not gonna lie to you. Leopard geckos are probably the easiest lizard to take care of. Now we'll get some cool montage of my leopard gecko cause he's cute. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Share this video with a friend and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Goodbye.